we are in a world where branding and image is now more important than the music itself. I'm going to tell you some things about the music industry that you might not like. Jojo Siwa. Look, if you came to this video and you're expecting a dramatic teardown of Jojo Siwa, I'm just going to let you know there are enough channels that are focusing on all that and this vid ain't for you. But if you're here and you've kind of heard about what's going on, which I will explain, and you want to learn more about the reality of the music industry and how song placement works, and how it works for the vast majority of music artists, you're in the right place. Now, for some of you who are wondering, who the f*** is that guy? I am the lead singer of an independent DIY band, City of Sound. We make all of our own music. I am also a songwriter and a producer. I have written and produced for multiple artists. This is just an example of one page from my BMI catalog. I even have songs that I have written that I haven't even been paid my credit for. Just saying Universal, if you ever want to get back to me. Signed for a percentage on that one years ago. Still haven't gotten anything yet. There will be no personal attacks on this video. I do not know Jojo Siwa. Neither does anybody watching this video. So even in the comments, y'all know what my channel is about. You know what the band is about and our message. We only want life being spoken here. I don't mind honest criticism about the overall industry and overall music artists and song placements and songwriters and such. But let's not go personal. Let's just like keep it positive here because, because I don't know anything about her personal situation. She might be awesome. She probably is. A couple weeks ago, Jojo Siwa released a song called Karma. The song came off. It was used as a rebrand, absolutely led by her PR team and her team in order to create a more adult approach to her music. The song has now been criticized, blown up, and torn down and being used against her as if she is a fake music artist, uh, doesn't write her own stuff, etc, etc, etc. Now she also has another song which she has shown on social media here. This song, I want you to listen for a very special ad lib. Because it is about one of my exes. And I will sure as hell point it out when that ad lib comes. Which was found to have been written and put out on TikTok by an artist named Emmeline. I will put a link to her music also pinned in the comments along with our link just, you know, to show some love. So that has led to an incredible amount of criticism that she is in some way a unique situation of an artist who is stealing songs someone who is faking it the whole way and it's behind a PR, it's behind the management, the label, all of that. Claiming that it is pure manufacture and not real. Is there a hint of truth to that with a lot of music artists? You know, the manufacturing of story rebranding. Absolutely. We've even had PR before and though we didn't have any of those things going on, PR 100% makes sure that they put you in the places to get views, to get messages out, making sure certain things are said. And at her level, it is a completely different world. And a lot of times what you fall into with a lot of those rebrands is disingenuousness and just overall fakeness. It may come off a little try hard. What I want to talk about is the genuineness of being an artist and the truth about these songs instead of people just spouting off that she has stolen songs that she is faking her way, that she's walking over like songwriters, all these things, okay? This is probably going to make you kind of mad because I think a lot of people are going to find out a lot of their favorite music artists don't necessarily take a direct role in the creation of their music. Not all of them, and we're going to get to that too. Karma, the song in which Jojo Siwa just released, the song was actually written in 2011, allegedly was going to be a part of Miley Cyrus's rebranding turn. The song then didn't go to her. People are claiming that Jojo Siwa basically took it like for herself and is now claiming that it's hers. Let's get into the honesty part right away. I have song written and produced for multiple artists. I'm going to let you know right now. This is something that a lot of people aren't going to like to hear. The vast majority of artists get a catalog. The catalog has a bunch of songs in it. 
The artist and their team will go through that catalog of what's available, and they will pick and choose which songs they want for their artistry. That is just the reality of the business. Here's the thing. The writers and the producers still get paid, still get accredited. I think where people are starting to get frustrated with a lot of music artists is when they claim that the song is theirs in a way as if they brought it to life and as if they are the ones who created it, which I understand. I get that. But this is how the music industry works. I wrote a song about four years ago and it got picked up by the artist Blondish, who is a very well-known house DJ. And what's cool though is, is she took the song and made it hers, which I love. I'll be honest with you guys. I personally only like to work with artists who want to be directly involved in the creative process where they are in the room and they are helping drive the creativity. But that doesn't mean that I don't have songs that I would not sell or allow an artist on the outside to take because of course I would. That's great success. So let's just get that on the board now that she's not stealing songs unless there are lawsuits that are filed which has happened to multiple artists before and then they are forced to pay out credit to the person or the artist they took from that's not what's happening here and i also want to say too i listened to a video of her talking about her song karma she never once said that she wrote it she actually said i want this song i want it to like be a part of my music so she even hinted at the fact that she did not write it She did not have a part in producing it, that she was picking the song from a catalog and wanted it for herself. Her team wanted it for her rebrand. You have artists who are more vocalists. You have artists who will take songs from songwriters, from producers, and they want to put their voice on the song. It becomes their song. And many times you will see that artist give credit to the songwriter. One instance, Halo by Beyonce, accrediting Ryan Tedder. You you do see that. Now, on the other side is a music artist, an artist who claims that they are in the room, they are creating this project. Um, They're the ones who are leading the creative identity of what these songs are and the construction of the album. First artist that's going to come to your mind is Taylor Swift, 100%. Also, City of Sound. I had to plug at some point. I had to plug at some point. But where I think it becomes an issue is we are in a day and age where manufacturing image on social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, It is making someone seem like a music artist who actually has no partake in the creative process. Now, I I think it's something that should be talked about, and I think it should be on the table because one, I am not saying that is what Jojo Siwa is doing. I think that is where some of these people are coming from who are criticizing her. I just don't think they actually know what they're talking about, and I don't think they understand what happens behind the scenes under all these big power brokers who kind of control... (laughs) where music goes and who picks up music and who they work with. And so I think we're actually in a place in the music industry where more and more because of the overabundance of access there is to artists, to who they are, to their brand, to their songs, their process, I think it's actually making people want things to be more genuine, honest, true. And I love that because as you know about us, like we write and produce all of our own music. Y'all know I'm on this YouTube and I'm very vulnerable about, you know, our struggles and our failures. But what you see is what you get. We are not trying to rebrand ourselves. We're not trying to put something out there that's more extreme than what we actually are. And I think this is where the foundation of people's criticism is coming from. I don't actually think people think she stole songs. And at least I hope not because she didn't. She didn't steal songs. Her team and her went through a catalog She found the songs that she wanted to be a part of her rebrand and where she wanted to go, which I can appreciate that. That's a business decision and it's very smart. And at the same time, like she still went into the studio and put the work in, you know, she still went in the studio. She put the work in on the vocals. I'm sure that took time. Um, I've never seen her perform live and I have no idea what her vocal training is. But sometimes if you don't have a lot of vocal training, those are long days. Those are long processes that you got to work with the producer and the songwriters and really lock it in. So I just want to kind of get that out there too. But I think it all comes down to the genuineness of someone being who they are. In the industry, your story can 100% be controlled by PR and your team. And you have an idea of where you kind of want to take your image or your brand and the kind of music you want to go into. They will take that and they will turn it up to 11 and they will post it everywhere. They will get you on every outlet, every interview, anything they can in order to force that image into people's brains. 
And like I just said before, I think the oversaturation of social media is making people want more than that. And I think that's a great thing. I think we are finding ourselves with a lot of artists and music artists that we want to see who they really are. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Jojo Siwa's rebrand isn't who she really is. What I'm saying is when you do get a song and it's a song that's a part of your rebrand, you should mention who the writers are if you had no part in the creative process. You should mention who the producers are and what it was like working with them. And then explain that even though like you didn't write the song, why does it connect so much to who you are and like what you're becoming? Because then it becomes very honest. And actually, it's going to help people to lock in to where you're coming from and believe where you're coming from. I think what's hard about a lot of artists' rebrands nowadays is one, the extremity that they go to, but the try hardness feels like it's just being used for shock value in order to generate fame. And I'm going to let you know, like all these like videos criticizing her right now and saying all these kinds of things about her, her PR team loves it. And also like those channels need to shut the f up. I understand that like you get views off like all the drama and stuff, but like make it about the art. If you're going to criticize something, criticize the art of it. But I think when it just becomes, when you're just talking shit to talk shit, I'm not interested. You go and look at the writing credits for her song Karma. She didn't even negotiate to have her name as a writer's credit or as a producer's credit, which I kind of give her credit for. That's a lot of honesty for when people go and look at your credits. Not every artist does that. And I know this video might seem like I'm kind of all over the place, a little bit scatterbrained. Maybe you feel like I'm not saying anything, but that's because I don't write a script. I want this to be honest and true, straightforward with you guys. I've been in studio and I've worked on songs that artists have picked up. The artist goes around and claims that they wrote the song. That does happen. And I've had that happen where I've literally written every single word, top line, production, concept, everything, get them a banger song. And then they make up a complete story about how they wrote the song. I just want to bring context to the fact that the hate that she is getting, again, I think it's more found in that manufactured, like rebranding side of it. But people are taking that part that they really dislike and they're trying to now discredit her on this side. I just want to point out, I've never seen her make a claim that she wrote these songs. And the only thing I've seen her claim is that she wanted it, that she wanted the song for herself. So I think it is more of an ignorance thing that I've seen a lot of people, everyone on Twitter, how this has gone viral. I think that people just don't understand how the industry works. Honestly, I think this is good because I think people need to know how the industry works. A lot of your favorite artists pick songs out of a catalog. It's, it's not something that I can't stand. I've placed songs that same way. Now, personally, do I like to support artists that I know are at the forefront of their creative and their artistry? Yeah. Does that mean everyone has to though? No. I do think it makes you more legitimate. I think it makes you more of a music artist. Now, if you consider yourself a vocalist and that is what you do, grab those songs from those catalogs and rip your voice on them and crush them. Because I will tell you that it is much more likely for a vocalist to credit songwriters, to credit producers. And they will, they will not be afraid to talk about the team that is around them. And I absolutely respect and appreciate that. But we are in a world where branding and image is now more important than the music itself. The music is put together for two and a half minutes to go viral on TikTok. So that way the branding and the imagery goes farther around the world than the song itself. And when that happens, slowly but surely, it is going to start feeling disingenuous. And I think what we're starting to see is people feeling that way, whether justified or not, because I don't want this to come off as if like she's not being genuine. I don't know her. It could be completely genuine, but I think it's an overall commentary on the industry as a whole and how it's been working. I think we're coming to a place actually that's really good for the music industry. People are wanting more genuine interactions with their favorite artists in the music they make, and they want to see their process, but also hear from them personally and see them for who they are. I think that's a beautiful thing. I don't think that's the worst path for it to take. And honestly, for us as a band, that's actually even better. All we're ever gonna be is ourselves. We're not gonna try to be cool, and we're not gonna try to do this rock star thing, because at the end of the day, I just wanna be out in the woods, on a property, writing music, and then go on tour, and then come right back to the small country town that I live in, which I'm still working on getting there. 
We're almost there. I would love to see your comments below, whether you agree with me, disagree with me. I would just love to see how you see the music industry, where it's going. There you go. That is how song placement actually works. Most artists go through a catalog, pick and choose the songs that they want or don't want, which is why you'll hear about an artist passing on a song years ago and another artist picks it up years later. It does not mean that artist is stealing music or is a fake person. She's not stealing songs. Let's just make that clear. That was a lot of talking just to talk about some dumb viral drama. So Your dreams are cosmic rhymes and let's fall under praise. Celestial signs, they are for you. Speak your dream. 